Proverbs has a whole lot to say about anger. But in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 22, it says, An angry man stirs up strife, and the furious man abounds in transgressions. You know, when you begin to sin in your anger, when you get furious, you don't sin just a little bit. You sin a whole lot. You know, that's what that word abound means. Abound means a whole lot. A furious man sins a whole lot. And that's true for us as well. Have you ever noticed that anger is contagious? You can be perfectly happy and you get around somebody that's angry, even if you're not involved in the situation, and it's not long and you're angry too. Well, you know, one of the biggest problems with Christians is their friendships. Let me tell you something. A friend can pull you down and pull you away from the Lord ten times faster than you can ever pull them up and pull them toward the Lord. So once you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you need to be careful who your friends are. You need to be careful who is the influence in your life. Okay? Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 22 verse 24 it says make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man do not go lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul now if you're married to a chronically angry person then you have a major problem and I'm going to give you some keys as to how to deal with that okay now, I want us to look at two very specific examples in God's Word that will reveal to us exactly how God re regards our sinful anger. And the first one is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 49. Genesis, chapter 49. Now, in the Old Testament days, the Holy Spirit did not dwell inside people the way he does on this side of the cross. Instead, the Holy Spirit would come on to people at various times in their life, and then God would speak through them. And in this scripture, Jacob knew that he was going to die. And in verse 1 it says, And Jacob called his sons to, and said, Gather together, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Now it's very important that you understand that from this point on, it is no longer Jacob speaking. It is God speaking through Jacob. So that makes these words incredibly important because this is God speaking, not the man, Jacob. In verse 5, God speaks about two of Jacob's sons, and he says, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Now there's several things that we need to notice here. First of all, God says, let not my soul enter their council, nor let my honor be united to their assembly. Do you know that when you sin in your anger, God does not want you to claim to be a Christian. He does not want his name united with yours. He says, let not my honor be united to their assembly. That's how seriously God re regards our sinful anger. And then God was so upset over the sinful anger of Simeon and Levi, he pronounced a curse on them, but not just on them. This was a generational curse that went down from father to son and on and on and on, right down through the family line. You know, in this day and age of our fractured families and single parent homes, 
We don't have a good understanding of how God values family lineage, but he does. It's a very important principle. I was talking to Daniel last night, and he said as he was driving home from what he had to do yesterday, he was talking to the Lord, and he said, Lord, I don't understand. Why is it that so many children around the world die young? Why is it that they never have an opportunity to fulfill their lives? And the Lord spoke to Daniel something that he nor I have ever thought about. He said, so many of those children, if I didn't take them home to be with me, there would not be one member of their family line in heaven throughout eternity. That's how much God values family lineage. Your family, your family line is so important to God. And it's an absolute principle in his word. And that's why curses can be passed down from generation to generation, as well as blessings. Blessings can be passed down from generations to generations. But the principle of inheritance is extremely important in God's kingdom. And you know, God wants representatives. He would like to have all of the family line. But he wants to be sure that every family line on earth is represented in heaven throughout eternity. Isn't that amazing? That's why in the book of Revelation, John said, I saw a multitude of people of every tribe and nation and tongue of every race. It doesn't matter what race you're from. Every one of us is equally important to God. Amen. And your family lineage is equally important to God. I never understood fully the importance of family lineage until the Lord gave my husband that revelation last night. But when you think about it, think about these pagan nations where the gospel is never heard. Is not the child death rate incredible in those nations? But God is making sure that every one of those family lines is going to be represented in heaven throughout eternity. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful we have a God that values us that much. All right. <clears throat>